Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a binary clock. Binary clock is a clock that displays time in a binary format. And a binary format or a binary system is a numbering system that is represented by only two numbers, a zero or a one, and we call this a base two numbering system, as opposed to a base 10 or a decimal numbering system that we're familiar with that is represented by 10 numbers from zero to nine. How this clock is going to work is that there are gonna be a total of six four digit binary numbers. Each represents the 10 and the unit digits of the hour, the minute, and the second hands. And how we read a binary number is actually quite simple. Let's take this for an example. 0101. Zero, one, zero, one. This is a four digit binary number. Each digit represents a base 2 to the power of n, where n is the placement of the number starting from 0 in the most right location and increases by 1 as it gets to the left. A binary number basically tells us whether we use that number or not, where 1 is a yes and 0 is a no. So in this case, the binary number 0101, zero, one, zero, one, we're using the digits in the zeroth and the second location. So to get the equivalent base 10 number, we just need to add them up. So 0 plus 4 plus 0 plus 1 equals to 5 in the base 10 numbering system. There are many approaches that you can take to convert from a decimal number to a binary number and also to make this binary clock. And I'm only going to show you one way. So I challenge you to try a different way if you want to get more practice. Also, I recently did another coding tutorial called a binary piano. So if you like this one, I do recommend you checking that one out as well. To get the current time, I'm going to be using three built-in functions, hour, minute, and second. And I'm going to set these functions to three variables, h, m, and s. And then I'm going to print it out. All right, so currently it is 10 o'clock, 33 minutes and 59 seconds. And now it is 40, 34 minutes. So as you can see here, there are two types of numbers. There is a two digit number and then there is a one digit number. So we need to take that into account when we convert the numbers into a binary number. Now let's write a function called decimal to binary and this is the function that does exactly what the name suggests. It is going to convert from a decimal number to a binary number. And I'm going to put in DEC for decimal number as a parameter because we want to convert this decimal number into a binary number. So the three steps that we're going to take is that first we want to separate the decimal number into two digits, a 10 digit and a unit digit. So get unit and 10 digits from decimal number. And then we want to convert it into a binary number. So convert decimal to binary. And then the last step is that we want to convert the binary number into an array format of size four because we want each digit to be a four digit binary number. So get binary array of size four. All right, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's begin with the first step. To get the unit and the 10 digits of th this decimal number, we need to write a conditional statement that says if decimal is less than nine. So if it is less than nine, it is a one digit number, right? So how about we also declare 10 digit and unit digit. If this number is less than nine, it means that it is a one digit number, which means the 10 digit will be equals to zero and the unit digit will be equals to that number, right? So DEC, else, which means that this decimal number is a two digit number, then the 10 digit will be, so actually let me show you how this is going to work. So let's say that I declare a variable called DEC, set it to 45, and then I want to just get the 10 digit here, which is a number four, what I can do is that I can divide this number by 10. So if I divide it by 10, then the number that I get is 4.5. And then I can use another function called floor to get the closest integer to this number. So we get the number four. So this is exactly what we're gonna do. So floor of DEC divided by 10. And then as for 
the unit digit, we want the number 5, right? So what we can do is that we can just subtract 45 by 40 to get the number 5. 45 is the decimal number, and 40 is basically floor of DEC divided by 10 times 10, right? So times 10. So here, if we print 10 digit and unit digit, just to make sure that this part of the code works, and then inside here, I'm going to call the function decimal to binary and then put in DEC. Then now we have two separate digits, 4 and 5. So let's try 12. We get 1 and 2. What if we put in a one-digit number? Then we get 0 and 1. And if we put in, let's do 0. Same. All right. So now we're done with the first step. We want to now convert a decimal number into a binary number. How we're going to convert from a decimal number to a binary number is by using a built-in method within a string class called toString of two. So first, let's declare a variable called binary. And how we're going to be using the toString of two method is by putting the number that we want to convert of the type integer here. So dec dot two string of two. All right. And then now, how about we print binary? And instead of putting in the number zero here, let's do how about five? And we get one zero one, right? So let's do a bigger number. How about 30? One 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 zero. And then what is the type of this number? It is of the type string and it is of the length five. So what we have here is a string, one string of size 5. But what we actually want in the third step here is that we want to get a binary array of size 4. So actually, it would never be of size 5 because the number that we have is going to be less than 9. So it's always going to be just number of size 4. So how about we change this to 4? But then there's a chance that the number is of the length of less than 4. So first, we want to make sure that we have a string of size 4. And we can do that by using another string class method called pathstar. So we're going to set binary to be equals to itself binary dot pathstar. And the first argument that we're going to put is the desired length that we want. So in our case, we want the length of 4. And then the second argument is in the case that that string is of the length that is less than 4, what is the character that you want to insert into the string to add it to make it up to the length of 4. So in our case, we want to add 0. And it is going to add it in front of this original string. So let's try it. So now it becomes 0, 1, 0, 1 from 1, 0, 1, right? And now the length is 4. But what if the number is already of the length 4? Then no problem. It doesn't do anything. So it's just 1, 0, 0, 1 in this case. But if the length is way less, so it becomes 0, 0, 0, 0. Let's try 1. So it's 0, 0, 0, 1. So now we always have the string of the length of 4. But what we have here is a string of length 4. But actually what we want is a binary array of the size 4, right? And we can use another method called split. It basically splits the string into substrings and then put it inside an array. So what we need to do is binary is equals to binary dot split. And then the argument that we need to put is a separator that tells how do we want to separate the string. And we want to separate it by this empty spaces. So by putting this empty string, it's basically just going to split it into each of the characters here. So let's try it. So now from 0, 0, 0, 0 as a string, now it is the substrings inside an array with each of the numbers inside each of the index. All right. So what we need to do next is that we need to get the 10 digit array and the unit digit array, right? So let's start with the 10 digit array. So we want to set it to 10 digit, right? We want to convert it into a binary number. And then we want to make sure that it is of the size 4. And then we want to make sure that it is in an array. 
All right, and we're going to do the exact same thing for the unit digit array. Now we just want to return an array of the 10 digit array and also the unit digit array. Okay, then in here, I'm just going to print decimal to binary of DEC. And DEC equals to one. Now what we have is a 2D array and each with a binary number representing the 10 digit and the unit digit of the decimal number. Now what we want to do is that instead of setting H, M, and S to these functions, we actually want to put these numbers as an argument inside the decimal to binary, right? So decimal to binary of hour, and same thing for minute and second. And then if I print H, M, and S, then what we have is three sets of 2D arrays. Each represented the unit digit and the 10 digit of the hour, the minute, and the second hands. Now I'm going to set another array called clock, and clock is going to be of the size 6, and each of the locations is going to be representing the 10 and the unit digits of each of the hour, minute, and second hand. So let clock to be equals to, so to make a 2D array, I can't just put in H, M, and S here because that is going to make it into a 3D array. So what I need to do is I need to put in H of 0, H of 1, and same thing for M and S. All right, so now clock is a 2D array of the length 6, and each of the location represents each of the four-digit binary numbers of my binary clock. Now, to the last step, what we need is we need to write a for loop, a nested for loop that goes from i equals to zero to i less than columns, i plus plus, for let j equals to zero, j less than rows, and then j plus plus. And then let's declare columns and rows, so we don't need this anymore. So columns will be equals to six, right? There are a total of six columns and rows will be four because we have a four digit binary number. Now, let's start by drawing a rectangle. So the rec function takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y coordinates of the top left corner of the rectangle, and then the third and the fourth are the width and the height. The x coordinate will be spaced out evenly by the width of the rectangle and the y location will be spaced out evenly by the height of the rectangle. So x will be equals to i times b width, right? And then y will be j times b height. So let's declare b width and b height. So I'm actually going to set it equals to width divided by columns and then height will be b height will be the height of the canvas divided by the number of rows. So now inside here, we just do x comma y, b width, and then b height. All right, so we have a total of six by four rectangles. Now I also want to draw an ellipse, and I want it to be at the center of each of these rectangles. So if I put in just x and y here, and let's do the size of 20. It is at the top left corner here, right? So we also need to adjust it, move it a little bit by half of the width and then half of the height. All right. And then now that we have this 2D array and we have this nested for loop, we want to color each of the circles here based on the binary clock, right? So what we can do is we can, first I'm going to put in fill for the rectangles to be zero. So it's always zero. But then for the circles, it is going to be based on this clock. So if clock of i and j is equals to one, then how about we fill it with the color 
red. And then else, we just fill it with white. All right. So what time is it now? It is 11, right? 1, 1, 0, 9. So 11 o'clock, 9 minutes. And this is what? 1, 2, 4, 5. <laughs> it's too fast for me to count. So how about we also print out our minute and second. So it's 11, 10, and then 8 seconds, 9 seconds, 10 seconds. And now we have a binary clock. So the last step is make it a little bit more beautiful by adding some colors and things like that. But first, I want to actually add a border. So how about we set the border to 20? And what I need is that the width and the height will actually be different. So it is going to be width minus two sides of the border, right? So borders times two, and then same thing for this side. And we also need to make sure that it is offset by that same margin of border. So we need to add border here and border here. All right, so now it is in the middle of the canvas. And then how about we change some colors a little bit? So what I want to do is first I want to declare a variable called C. I'm going to set C as a color, as this green color. And then inside here, I don't need to print the hour out anymore. I want to fill the background with the color 227. And same thing for this and also this. But then I want this to be the color green as well. Let's try it. All right. And then I want to color the stroke to be the same green. And I want the stroke weight to be a little bit big at three. All right, then I'm just gonna leave it as this and I'll let you explore how to make it more beautiful. But this is just one application of turning from a decimal number to a binary number to create something that is visually engaging, I hope. So I hope that you give this one a try.